Jesus? Yes, sir. Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Yes, sir. Then why don't you tell them now? I love you. Do you love the Father? Yes, sir. and we welcome you to all of our services located 1819 Inglewood here in Lemon Grove, California. And listen, from the Rat Pack and Dean and Transform for Christ to our young adults, the young disciples, there's always excitement. We're always up to something here in Uptown and you ought to be a part of this great, wonderful, up-and-coming congregation. Sit back, relax, enjoy the wonderful sermon that we preach. We know that you'll find Jesus in his word and you'll be glad that you stay. Uh, Psalms 51, and let me while you're looking for it, just uh, kind of give you the uh, hermeneutical construct that I, I'd like to, for you to think about this lesson, and that is uh, that, that when, when thinking about this lesson, I, I can't help but think about David and uh, the correlation and what he's writing as it relates to uh, our 12-step addiction plan. Can help to think about how one of the first things that you do when you know you have a problem, according to the first step, is that you admit that that you're powerless and that your life is unmanageable. You have to admit that that you you don't have the answers uh, by yourself. You have not had the answers by yourself. You have to come to a place in your life where you realize that it's necessary for you to seek some help and that you've been a poor manager of the, the talents and the anointing that God has given you. Uh, the second step in that plan is that you then come to believe that there's a greater power than yourself uh, that's able to, to return your sanity unto you. Notice that in the text, the very first verse, David uh, turns to a greater power than himself. Uh, he realizes that God had done a lot of wonderful things for him all of his life, but yet somehow in the midst of the sin and the cycle of dynamics, perhaps being passed down to Solomon into his life, uh, his curiosity for women, his, 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 his veracity and appetite for women had gotten him in trouble with Bathsheba and uh, he realized that, that this thing he's going through is bigger than just seeing itself, and so he categorized uh, his mistakes and his errors and his life by, by listing three things. He says, oh Lord, have mercy upon me. And every now and again, every one of us ought to reach a point where we're through blaming everybody else and talking about what everybody else is doing, but can be honest and look in the mirror and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. According to thy loving kindness and according to thy tender mercies, I want you to the multitudes that you have in your mercies to blot out my uh, transgressions. I want you, Lord, to wash me from my iniquities. That's the second type of error. And then cleanse me from my sins. David says that I have transgressions, I have iniquities, and I have sins. And, and if it was just us, we would have said, forgive me for my sins, but there is a difference in my transgressions, my iniquities, and my sins. And, and they affect me differently. They affect me in different ways because in my transgressions, I've come to know that it's not merely sin, but uh, it is an origin of sin that is comparison or a comparison to the sins of Adam. In other words, there are some time in my transgressions when I go off the path from God that what I have done has not only affected me, but has affected everybody around me. Y'all have to say amen. The king himself has been incapacitated. The king himself, uh, by his mistake, he sinned, but in that transgression, Israel falls. In that transgression, the king of Israel, the man that's connected to God, no longer has the power to approach God on behalf of the people of God. And God has the right to bring somebody else up in order to get the job done that the king was supposed to get done in the first place. And so sometimes we see it, it not only affects me, but it affects my, my household, it affects my children, it affects 
of people that work with me. I'm in my transgression, and all I can say is, God, have what? Mercy. Have mercy on me. Mm. And then, and then he says, I need you to help me with my my iniquity, and, and, and just bear with me because. I, I, I want to try to get this done in the front end. It'll make the other end easier. But in my iniquity, we understand uh, that the word iniquity, the avon or the avon, uh, simply means my perversity. It's not that I just sin. So when you really get real, I'll be on your street just so when you really get real, it's, it's sometimes it's not that I sin, but it's the veracity of my sin. It, it's not that David just failed. 2 Samuel 12, starting in verse number 1, Brandon. It's not that he just failed. It's not that we made mistakes, but it's how I made a mistake. I didn't just sin, but it's how I planned to sin. And I didn't just plan to sin, it's the attitude and the nature in which I sin. And I didn't just, in the attitude and nature, I, I did not want to sin, but I, I actually enjoyed sin. And I didn't just enjoy sin, but I had to work real hard to get that. Y'all look at me like I don't know what I'm talking about. Because you know, every one of you sitting here, when you sin, it's not quite by accident. Amen. You didn't just stumble into that liquor store say amen. amen. It just happened to be there. And, and there was a bottle of, uh, what is it called, Hallisay? A bottle of uh, Hallisay. Uh, you didn't just stumble up in there. You, you, you went up in there knowing what you were going for. I'm not coming out and preaching, y'all. Y'all, 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 y'all,
in the in the in the in the uh, uh the, 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 the not, not illuminating all, but in the the average average uh, uh average <laughs> trying to say this word can't get it out right arrogant the arrogance of the sin. I'm so arrogant in my sin. I'm gonna do what I want to do in front of the whole world, and I don't I don't care what happens. But I'm so arrogant and so bold, can't nobody tell me nothing. And in my arrogance, I'm sinning, and the preacher better not call me because I'm David the King, and I can do what I want to. Go ahead, it's your birthday. Go short it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, it's just my birthday. Go short it. It's your birthday. Uh huh. We gonna. I wish I had some holy folk up in here this morning. Because I'm not talking to y'all act like y'all in here. Don't talk to three people that know what I'm talking about. Can you say amen? amen. His sin is not even in the call, but then it produces guilt. How do you know it produces guilt? Because David in the in verses six through uh, uh, verses six through about verse number uh, ten, David says some things. He said, "I want you to wash me uh, uh, with uh, purge me with hyssop." Uh, because my washing that I need is not on the outside, but I, I have this guilt on the inside. Mm -hmm. That when I think about the stuff I did and who I did it with and how I went about doing it, that it brings me to the all time low. So, Lord, am I, I talking to somebody right now? So, Lord, I need you to purge me. I, I need you to pull me from this stuff because guilt is weighing me down. Now, watch this. Some of you have messed up in your life. And you let guilt ride you down. And guilt has you where you think you're not worth nothing. You're not about nothing. But thanks be to God that God can fix guilty hearts and consciences this morning. And put you on an all-time high and free you from your guilt. He can purge you from your guilt. Y'all all right this morning? And that's the good news about the prayer. And I'm going to show you that, that God purged him uh, from his guilt. And so if you have your Bibles, I want you to follow along with me very quickly because I want to look at, at the call of David, the guilt, and then I want to conclude uh, with the gift that God gives uh, David in the end. The gift that God gives David in the end. Notice in first, Second Samuel chapter 12, verse number 1, that this uh, uh, Nathan comes to David, and Nathan uh, says to David, he says, David, uh, 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 there was a man who, who had, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, who had a, uh, just a slew of anything that he wanted, and, and he went to a man who only had one wee lamb, and he took that wee lamb, and he took all that man had, and, and then he took that man, what he had, and had it for himself, and God would have given him anything, and if he wanted something else, God would have gave, gave him that times in your life that God has been so good to you, there's really no need for you to ask God for anything else. Somebody I say, and you, and, and, you know, and you know, God has God has blessed us in spite of us, uh, but, but in our call, in our, in our Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 2, where we're so compassed about with such greater cloud of witness that, that we're instructed to lay aside every sin and the weight that so easily beset us, we reach a point where we want to have what we want to have, and we find ourselves doing what we want to do. Uh, in David's prayer, uh, he is responding to the parable of the story in this chapter in which uh, Naaman uh, lays, uh, lays out a pathological behavior that David says, whoever done this to this man, to everything he has, that I want to kill him and then I want to make him pay back that person with, with, with four times what he had. And then Nathan looked at me and said, let me tell you something. He said, that man is you. That man is you. Uh, and before you get indignant at all the stuff that David did, what did David do? He took that man woman, he took, he brought he had his way with her. Now he had that man's wife. He brought that man from the field. He got conniving. He looked and he said, Well, uh, I gotta make him believe it's his baby. So he said, Go sleep with your wife and know what? And then he, he said, I don't want to do that. My my arm is out in the field. I want to be loyal. You're my king. I should be fighting for you. When that wouldn't work, he said, Well, go back out to the front line. The man got killed in the battle. Do you see the call of David emerging in this text? Uh, look at step number five of the, of the addiction 12 step plan. It says that we ought to make uh, earnest uh, inventory uh -huh, of our moral and ethic, ethical behavior. Uh, when you look at the ethics that, that, that David ran across, uh, it almost seemed like he was possessed with something. So the, the, the sin and the 
the iniquity and the transgressions are tied together because there is a spirit that can get inside of us, Acts 8, verse number 23, and which Paul says, and I perceive that you are full of gall and all bitterness, and then what he says, and in the bonds of iniquity. David says that I had a spirit in me that was so perverse. I had a spirit in me that was so not me that I did things against the kingdom of God that I'm ashamed of, that I have guilt of, and only God can help me. And I want you to know this morning that some of you right now are in a position that only God himself can help you. You don't have to look for no man to help you. Look at the verse. Look, go back to the text. I'm not Jay Walker. I'm following the text. He said, against you and against you have I sin. Y'all all right? In other words, whatever David done, it sound horrible. But guess what? David didn't do nothing to none of you. Amen. Amen. You don't judge David because the only person that can help David is who? The Lord. Is God. Go back to verse number two of the text. I want to say, well, that's fine. Against thee and thee only. Or have I sin and have I what? Done evil in whose sight? In thy sight, that thou mayest be what? Justified when thou what? Speaking. And that thou mayest be what? Clear when thou just read. Watch it. That David, David's great. Behold, I was shaping iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. But go back to verse number three. Because oftentimes uh, we start to think that when we mess up, that somehow we got to prove ourselves to somebody else. If you ever, if you can relate to David right now, well, you should have lost your mind when you've done something you can't even tell nobody about. That it's a big secret right now. I want you to know you, all you have to do is acknowledge your transgressions to God and God alone. Because because men will always put guilt on you, but God will give you with the freedom from the error that you made. You will never, never get focused. Stop talking about you, running you down, reminding you of what you did, but God, God is able to do power of prayer, through the power of repentance, that you acknowledge that I sin not against the men, but I sin against heaven. Say, God will lift you up. Amen. God will lift you up. Aren't you glad this morning? Aren't you glad that God will lift you up? Aren't you glad you make a moral inventory? When you take a moral inventory of your behavior, and you can say, God, you know, this thing is bigger than what I did to sister so-and-so. This thing is bigger than what I did to brother so-and-so. You know, the enemy is going to use them to try to keep guilt on me. But, Lord, I need you to free me from what folk think about me. I need you to free me from how folk look at me. I need you to free me how folk judge me. I want to own my stuff. I want to admit I was wrong. I was under. Him, I was conniving, but praise be to God, you can purge me, you can clean me, you can wash me, and I'll be white as snow. The only thing I got to do is learn how to forgive myself for the stuff I've done in my life. Oh, it's an awesome prayer. It's an awesome prayer, and, and you'll even see that you'll see that in in, in the gall of his of his insanity, his times of insanity, God was right there for him. Can you say Amen? Uh -huh. And so, so the next thing he has to do is deal with the guilt. Now, watch this very quick. We deal with the guilt. The guilt in the text is the fact that that he spends his time saying, "The Lord, I need you to wash and clean." Uh, the inner part. How do you know? Verse number five. He says, Behold, thy desire, thy desire, uh, 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 the, the, the truth of the matter. Uh, thy desire, trust the truth in the inner part. And in the hidden parts, uh, you shall make me to know wisdom. I don't believe, amen, I don't believe that God uh, knows that there's a devil walking around with all trickableness and all deceivableness uh, that trick his children sometimes into stuff that we will go into, uh, that if we acknowledge that we got played by the enemy and we can acknowledge our part that God won't forgive us. Amen. I don't believe that. I, I know folk won't, that's not folk job to forgive uh, you on that level because only God gives us with, with that with that love that cannot be explained. Am I right about it? But, but I believe that God looks into the inner parts and that God looks into the wisdom of the situation. And God knows we get caught up in some stuff that in spite of my mess up, I'm still made up by the master. Let me say that again. In spite of the mess, I, I know I look bad. I know y'all ain't gonna understand this. Y'all understand this. But see, the hidden parts, the wisdom in this thing is that sometimes when you're going through your paganism, it's because God is allowing you to go through because there's a bigger picture, a bigger thing in play. Uh, and it's bigger than you. And God will bring that in red. 
retrospect his wisdom of why your life is where it is. How many times have you been through something and were able to look back and say, now I understand why I went through what I went through. If I hadn't allowed you to do what you did and do what I did, we would have never got to this point. You say amen. If it wasn't for every person that broke your heart, you wouldn't know how to appreciate somebody that knew how to take care of your heart. Y'all ought to say amen. If it wasn't for every cook that you made, you'd never learn to save money from giving out your pen number. Say amen. If it wasn't for everybody that wrecked your car, you wouldn't understand stop leaving your car. Amen. Amen. I wish I had a prayer church up here. I need five people with the Holy Ghost right now to say thank you, Jesus. And I'm saying, ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, they, they love going too fast. I know I gotta get through to hear it. And then, and then, and then so some of y'all look at me like, mm hmm, mm hmm. And so I gotta make a moral inventory. He said, now the next thing you need to do in these steps, you need to show that David made a moral inventory. He said that number one, the sin that I committed, uh, uh, I, I was born in the flesh. I was born in the flesh. And then said that my mom, my mom can see the Lord on the flesh. I'm not perfect. And, and maybe I thought I was perfect. I tried to number the children of Israel. And they got in trouble. I, 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 I've learned that just because I'm king don't mean that I always act like king. Uh, uh, and, so, and so so David says, uh, uh, Lord, you know, I, I, not that I was born this way, but I had the propensity to behave this way. And here's the thing he, he says that, that really helped me a lot. He says, I can't fix it. But Lord, you can. You can fix it. I stop by to tell three people here this morning that think you can fix yourself by coming to church. That think that you can fix yourself by stop doing this and stop doing that. That you'll never fix yourself. That God has to create in you a new hope. Let me say that again. The problem is that you've been trying to fix yourself. And you still don't have your smile back. You've been trying to fix yourself. And you still can't get the guilt off of you. Look at Hebrews 10 and verse number 23. There were folk trying to fix themselves with uh, sacrifices, with obligations, with going to church. I read my Bible and I go to church and I offer sacrifices, but you still don't have joy in the house of the Lord. You've been trying to fix yourself by trying to be good and trying to say the right things and act like you're a Christian, but you had not fixed yourself. For the Bible says in those sacrifices uh, that there should not be a remembrance of sin. Are y'all looking at that? Uh, and, and, and watch this. And, and am, I, am I in the right place or in the wrong place? Because I want to show you this very quickly. Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews, is it 12 and 20? Let me look at it very quickly. No, Hebrews 10 verses 2 and 3. I'm sorry. Hebrews 10 verses uh, 2 and 3. I'm sorry. Hebrews 10 verses 2 and 3. All right, now watch this. Uh, for when they would not have ceased to be offered, talking about the sacrifices, because that the worshipers, are you a worshiper? If you're a worshiper, can you say amen? amen. But the worshiper once purged should have no more what? He should have no more what? Conscious of sin. In other words, when I get up here on Sunday morning, I say, sisters and brothers, uh, I have sinned. I, I repent of my sin, and I ask the church to pray for me. What's not fixed is my conscience about my sin. What David is saying in the text is that, that, that even though I got naked that day, and I stretched my hands out as a sign of penitence, and, and, and said that I'm sorry to God, and prayed for my child not to die, it didn't fix what I had done in my mind. It did not change the fact in my conscience that I have the ability and the propensity to be a monster at times. And it does not change the fact that this sin is running its course through me. And that at any time I can fall. And it does not change the fact of the shame and the guilt that I feel. God never intended, let me say this for you, God never intended for you to save yourself. God never intended for you to be able to sit down and fix your own life. If you could have fixed yourself, God would have never died on Harry's cross. I need Jesus because I cannot fix myself. I'm just made like this. Came from my mama had a bad temper. I got a bad temper. My dad had a bad temper. I got a dollar to say amen. My mama used to shout. I like to shout. Nobody say amen. So David says, Lord, create in me a new spirit. Give me a new mind. I want a new start. If you want a new start this morning and you try to come to church,
straight like God ain't never did nothing for you. Stop trying to fix yourself. Raise your hand and say, Lord, we ain't in me. Now, 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 now the devil beside you, they, they won't get mad because you ain't supposed to be raising your hand. But you tell I'm new spirit. Uh, and then tell them I got it. And then tell them, now look, you won't get mad, but I'm about to shout right now. Say, devil, I'm about to shout right now. You better move.